Reddit. What's your favorite no fucking way? Story, part one. If you would like more of this content, please like and subscribe our channel thread tonic. Account one. So my cousin and a group of close friends are spending a weekend in a cabin outside of Squamish, B.C. On the drive up, they heard over the radio that a summer camp for special needs children near the cabin they were staying at had gone camping and had subsequently lost one of the kids, and a search party had commenced looking for him. They shrug it off as shitty news and continue on with their trip, looking forward to an epic weekend. Fast forward to the next night, they're sitting around the campfire having a good time, drinking, reminiscing about old times. One of their friends pulls out a bag of shrooms he'd been saving as a surprise and asks if anyone wanted to make it a memorable night. Being the good Canadians they are, they ingest the drugs after saying please and thank you first. About three hours later, one of their friends gets it in his head. There are fucking trolls in the woods, and he's gonna find one if it takes him all fucking night. Without any hesitation, he dashes off into the woods on his epic troll quest. From the point of view of Mr. Aw, oh, troll hunter. He said he got about a good mile into the woods before he started seeing a bunch of moving lights off in the distance. He gets freaked out and takes off the other way, still determined to find a troll. He continues on. Lo and behold, he finds one, throws that bitch over his shoulder and heads back to camp. He gets back to the cabin. By this point, everyone had gone to bed and takes the troll into his room. He makes a nice little bed of blankets in his closet, lays the troll down in it, and proceeds to feed it a bowl of milk. Cause everyone knows trolls love milk. Shuts his closet and passes the fuck out. Wakes up the next morning, opens his closet to grab some clothes. And sitting in a bed of blankets is this nine-year-old kid with Down syndrome just staring up at him. He freaks the fuck out, decides he has to call the cops, calls them, tells them him and his buddies were hiking through the woods the night before and found the missing retarded kid from the nearby camp. Cops show up, commend him for being such an excellent citizen, and take the kid home. Few weeks later, he's in the paper and is awarded a key to the city for his heroism. TLDR guy trips shrooms camping, goes on troll hunt, finds troll, brings troll home, turns out troll is a missing retarded kid, wins key to city for being a hero. Account 2. My sister was driving down the street at 45 miles per hour with her windows open and a deer ran into the street. Instead of hitting this deer, the deer jumped into her car through the window, landed with its head in the foot part of the passenger side seat, and its butt on the headrest. The deer was freaked the fuck out, and with its butt in the air, proceeded to shit all over the car. She obviously pulled over. Several people stopped to help and asked her where the deer was. She just stood there screaming, It's in the car! It's in the car! A helpful man opened the door pulled the deer out, and the deer bounded off like nothing happened. For imagery, she was driving a late 90s Ford Escort at the time. No one believes this story, but it is 100% true. Account 3. My roommate had a huge fish tank with four cichlids in it. One of them, the pink one, was really fucking mean and used to pick on the other ones. I hated him. One night, I had a dream that I caught him with a net, threw him in a pan with some butter, fried him up and ate him. The next morning I walked by the fish tank, looked in to discover that the pink one was gone. I freaked out and looked all over the tank for him. He's nowhere to be found. When my roommate got home from work, I told him about my dream and that the pink cichlid is missing. He looked at me, visibly shaken, and said, Dude, I'm gonna start locking my bedroom door at night. Days and weeks go by. I'm truly disturbed that I'm capable of sleep eating, my roommate's pets. Finally, I'm so overcome with anxiety that I decide to scour the tank, CSI style, looking for clues. I pressed my face against every square inch of the tank, desperate to salvage a shred of sanity. After what must have been at least an hour, something tiny catches my eye under a large piece of coral in the back corner. I reached in and pulled out the coral only to discover the bones of the pink six lid, it had been wedged between the rocks and the coral on the bottom of the tank. Somehow, the other three kicklids had murdered the pink one and telepathically framed me for it. Not only did they frame me, 
They got me to confess. Account 4. One winter, I went sledding down a popular hill in my hometown with my brother and his wife. At the bottom of the hill, there's a frozen pond. My sister-in-law hopped on the back of my sled, sitting backwards, and we went down together. Due to the extra mass, we started going way faster than I'd expected. When I noticed we were heading right toward a little kid, I just couldn't maneuver out of the way, so I leaned forward and scooped the kid up, holding him up like Simba. Then I realized we were still about to sled into a frozen pond, so I bailed out and held the kid as high over my head as I could. I stood up, set the kid down, and looked around for his parents. When I saw a big dude coming at me, I was like, oh shit, here we go. Then he got closer, and I realized it was of my closest friends, and that the kid I ran into was his son, who I babysit regularly. I thought to myself, no fucking way, and gave him a big hug. The kid said he thought it was awesome. Account 5. When I was 17, I worked for an excavation, demolition company for the summer. We were gutting an old mill in New Hampshire to turn into high-end lofts. One of the workers was standing on the top of some scaffold about 12, 15 feet up, using a handheld band saw to cut through a large pipe as he was cutting. A strap supporting the pipe broke, letting it drop down and pinch the blade. This made the saw shoot back towards him and push him off the scaffold. This guy did a complete fucking backflip while holding a working saw from over 10 feet up. He landed on his feet. Saw still running. Everyone stopped and stared at him for about five seconds before we went back to work. TLDR, I worked with a redneck Jackie Chan in New Hampshire who does backflips with power tools. Account six. So I'm spending the summer on Nantucket Friends of mine introduced me to a guy named Robbie. He and I hit it off. It's like instant bro love. We spend days kicking it, smoking bowls and philosophizing. Then he leaves and we lose touch. Years go by. I'm on a subway in New York. This guy I sort of recognize is on the same car. He comes over and say hi. But it's my stop and so I get off. The instant the doors close, I remember who he is. It's Robbie, shit. The subway pulls away and he's gone. Years go by, I'm living in L.A., and it's my friend Leslie's birthday at some club down on Pico. We pull up to the front door. I hop out, and a guy smoking a cigarette outside says, Hey you, it's goddamn Robbie. We're best friends ever since, and he was best man at my wedding. Seven. Not quite as exciting, but I was walking back to my car from work when I saw a guy laying on the riverbank. He looked incredibly sick and was bright red from laying in the sun. I asked him if he was all right and he gurgled up an answer, so I gave him water and food while I waited for the police to get there. Turns out he was a sex offender who had been running around town that day, crossing intersections with his pants at his ankles. They had been trying to catch him, but couldn't find him. Account 8. My friend John is a paramedic and firefighter. He also teaches and certifies first aid, CPR. Now, for those that don't know, CPR is not very effective. It has a very low success rate unless initiated soon after an incident, which is why everyone should learn CPR. Even after revival, many people have serious health effects. One day, John gets into a pretty bad car accident and goes into cardiac arrest. The paramedics and police are dispatched. The officer first on scene knows CPR and initiates chest compression on John. John is revived, and although suffered severe memory loss, is, well, the kicker, John taught the officer CPR the week prior to the incident. Account 9. I'm not sure if this is dot .wtf, but my friend works as a paramedic in Chicago. She was in the ambulance when they got the call to go to an apartment complex where there had been a shooting. Possibly gang-related, I think she said. They got to the apartment and found a young kid who had been shot in the legs. She started treating him. Seeing that he had three holes in his pants, she assumed he had three gunshot wounds. But when she inspected his legs, she only found two wounds. She searched frantically for the other wound but couldn't find it. She asked the kid, Where else were you shot? He said, Nowhere. She explained the holes in his pants and he said, No, that's from the last time I was shot. She was frustrated by this and told him to get new pants. I think she said he ended up being okay. Account 10. I was at a car show and I was raising my hand so my parents could see I was still next to the old Cadillac Batmobile. 
Next thing I know, someone has high fives me. I look over and it was Adam West. He winked, smiled, and walked away to do more signings or something. It was glorious. Account 11. A friend of an old roommate of mine was at the airport a few years ago and saw Bill Nye, the fucking science guy at the terminal next to his. Eventually, he got up the courage to talk to him, but it was nothing more than small chat and praise. Bill's plane gets called, so the kid leaves him be and sits back down trying to digest how cool his life just became, but a few minutes go by and all of a sudden he hears his name called. Bill Nye is standing at the gate and calls out, Hey kid, science rules, then boards the plane. Account 12. So one time I was eating at a Wendy's and Bill Nye came up and stole a curly fry. He said if I told anyone, nobody would ever believe me. Then we talked about global warming for a bit. Account 13. Here's mine. I was walking my older dog one night around 10 p.m. I had him off leash since it was late and we were in a neighborhood. No one to bother. I kept track of him for poo. Duty as he sniffed around and we were approaching an intersection. The house we were walking along was 20 feet from the sidewalk, where I was, and was edged by very large juniper bushes, which he was checking out. Suddenly he stopped and dove into a bush. This was odd considering he was nearing 10 years old, and although he's active, he's not crazy like that. Note, lab, husky mutt for reference. Out of the bush comes some sort of snarl, scream, and all I could think was, shit. He got a raccoon, and out leaps a immature mountain lion, at least 20, larger than my dog. It runs off down the road, and I stand there terrified, yelling, no fucking way, as he comes back to me wagging ass like he's the greatest dog ever, which is very likely considering that cat was much bigger than me. It was probably his most well-earned rawhide bone he's ever earned. 14. I was deployed in Iraq and was out on a convoy on deck, 31, 2007. Long story short, I unknowingly pissed on an IED, which exploded 30 seconds after I walked away. This was on my birthday, TLDR. Trudge, trudge, piss, trudge, trudge, boom. Account 15. So a good friend of mine is in an airport in Canada in a bookshop, waiting to get the flight back to the UK with his family, about 7,8 at the time. Anyway, across the bookshop is Ian McKellen, Gandalf, and my friend and his brother really loved Lord of the Rings at the time. They go over to him and he looks over, realizes that they have recognized him, and right then and there does an impromptu rendition of the Bridge of Khazad dumb scene, complete with, you shall not pass, right in the middle of a crowded airport. He then gives them autographs, how's that for no fucking way? Account 16. My girlfriend and I were traveling in Italy and met this nice Australian girl on the train from Rome to Naples. We chatted a bit and learned that she had just left her friend in North Africa to start traveling on her own. Fast forward two weeks, and my girlfriend and I are now on a bus from Brasov, Romania to Bucharest, and we ended up randomly meeting the Australian girl's friend that was left in North Africa. Account 17. I was in London taking the train from the airport into the city and started talking to the girl sitting next to me about random shit. As it turns out, she's from the same state as me. That's not so weird because she was probably on the same flight and she goes to my university, that's kind of cool, so we talked a little about that. And holy shit, we have the same major. That's crazy. Did we ever have any classes together? Well, actually, yes, we were at the time in two of the same classes, and she sat behind me in both of them. We never recognized each other. Account 18. My brother's friends are twins and are friends with the Bush twins. Makes for a cute photo op. Well, about seven years ago, they were invited to their birthday party at the White House. It was a gag gift party. As they are going through the metal detectors, the Secret Service inspect the box with the presents pull out two giant black dildos, they stare down my brother's friends before proceeding to burst out laughing. I still can't fucking believe they went through with it, the truly giant balls. 19. My former English teacher went camping with his friends. They were riding on a bus, and he decides to take a nap. When he woke up, there was a Coke can floating in the air. So he reaches out to grab it, and when he comes to a little bit, his friends are freaking the fuck out. 
Why? Because his friend dropped his soda can and my English teacher woke up and caught it. Account 20. Flying 1,100 miles for an interview, I hear someone across the aisle yell my name. I'm thinking, that voice sounds familiar. Turns out it was one of my good friends from college. I'm thinking no fucking way. He got an interview the same time I did, and we stayed next door at the same hotel the night before the interview. And now we're housemates. Both got the job. The end.